And welcome to Castles and Cryptids, where the castles are haunted and the cryptids are cryptic as fuck. And I'm Alana. <laughs> I'm Kelsey. And she's still a little sick. <laughs> still a little, yeah. It's almost like you have a small child right now because you have a, a young niece. <laughs> yeah, right? I keep getting sick from her. My, my daughter still gets sick pretty much like once a winter. Not so much when COVID was on, because then they were literally going to school from home. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, <clears throat> she pretty much gets stuffed up for like several months in between December yes. and <laughs> March. I almost always have a cold. I'd say at least like 60 to 75% of the winter. Like always have my entire life. I always get you one always cold to... after another. Like, it's like when you have to be around crowds, you're like people yeah. in general. <laughs> yeah. It's like, damn it. People are the worst. So germy. Um, yeah. Just that's why we talk to you guys from afar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We love you. You can say hi to us in public if you see us. <laughs> yeah. Funny. If you know enough of what we look like to recognize us, that'd be pretty crazy. Oh, I know. You can go on the website. Don't normal people do that? I yeah. listen to a podcast and then I'm like, what do you look like? Because I'm picturing this. And then I like go on and yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> What is it in someone's voice? There's like so many possibilities of what they look like. Or like yeah. you're reading a book and you just kind of like, it's almost like a dream. You just, you generally picture, like with me, I don't know, maybe my mind's eye sucks, but I'll picture like a general look of someone or just like, oh, he's like a handsome guy with dark hair. Good enough. Your face is kind of a blur. <laughs> I don't really need yeah. to picture you too hard. <clears throat> right? Yeah. <laughs> I was just watching Modern Family and then she has one where she's like, I'm not really good at spatial imagining or whatever. And Cl it's Claire and she has that, like she's in that closet business that her dad has. And so <gasps> they like show her some design and she's like, oh, sure. I'd probably just, that's beautiful. I would just get up, walk over here, do that. And they're like, yeah, but you just um, threw your clothes in the fireplace and got dressed in front of the picture window. <laughs> She's like, well, oh, geez. I don't know what your morning routine is. <laughs> <So, laughs> I was like, oh my God. Same though. <laughs> Trying to I'm pretty, hard. <laughs> I'm pretty good for like spatial awareness and doing stuff. But I think it's just, yeah, like, I don't know when I, my first job I ever had, we had to pack up instead of like grocery store bags we had boxes i worked at m, &M meat shops so you had to the big orders oh. that you had even if they bought little piddly stuff it went in a box it didn't go in a huge in a bag so you got really yeah, good or at not even a plastic basket yeah. thing no okay okay no, just you got good box. at <laughs> yeah basically just a box you got Perfect. good at kind of tetrising <laughs> like stuff as you went like just putting oh. it in to the point where i sometimes am like bagging my groceries and i have the superstore bin and i'm just like putting stuff in and i find myself like tetrising being like like so fast <laughs> and then being like and soup in the corner and it fits perfectly and you're like there's a bin like <laughs> and it's but then like... is it with the other soups that's why I, I was so bad at that when i did work oh. cash for a while at a superstore i'm like wait i have to organize all this and they're gonna want all this stuff together but maybe it's not now you got meat over here you need your vegetables you got your cans oh no the whole art you can't squish anything i mean sounds like you were really good at it <laughs> yeah packing stuff at the end but i mean we didn't have anything that was really delicate because it was all frozen everything in our store was frozen so yeah we so it's really all in a box. a box in a box, box. <laughs> or it's frozen solid a bag out of garlic bread so you're not super concerned about <laughs> this yeah. baton of bread getting squished because it's frozen solid that's but, true that's true. yeah you get pretty good mm. at like packing stuff and you're like yeah 
<laughs> make the suitcase really organized. <laughs> have you guys ever had any supermarket mishaps? You have to bag it and they did something horrible. Or you had to bag it yourself. I know Pat hates that when we go to the superstore. <laughs> Here, cause mm. then they, they kind of make you do the bagging yourself when it gets down the yeah. line. And like I've we'll never go and like fill a shopping cart once a month sometimes. So Yeah. I've yeah. never not bagged my own stuff, so I find it weird to expect oh stores gosh. that they would bag it for you. Okay, I love going to, like, I'm totally a self-checkout girl nowadays, now that they're everywhere. I mean, I guess mm. I'm always, because I'll just go and buy a few things at once. But when we do, like, other than that, we do one big grocery shop when Pat gets paid at the end of yeah. the month. So that's when, yeah, yeah, it, it could be a lot when it's just me and him and a fucking cart. Sometimes more than a cart full of groceries. We'll have a cart full and he'll be like i didn't get my juice and then he just like go and get like a basket and then like oh, fill it with his juice cans and it's just like oh my god it's too much and then yeah. like i don't want to be those people one time we took i think it was a small cart but it was like through the self-checkout and then you're then you just don't have enough room to do that unless you're at walmart yeah, no. with the big ass things they have now where you like go through the cart lane <laughs> and you're uh, like you yeah. basically have your own like scanner and stuff and pat loves that because he's always like to the save on people like can i see your gun and i'm like your price gun your scanner <laughs> so i'll just like look at them all something can i see your gun <laughs> yeah you're ex-military but <laughs> it's a scanner. people too I don't know. I call like I, if somebody said, "Can I yeah. see your gun?" Like I wouldn't look like I'm absolutely bewildered about that's what you're possibly you asking. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I have to take a picture of Gordo right now. He looks so freaking comfortable. <laughs> Pause for Gordo. A picture of Gordo <laughs> being super distracting. He got stuck. He got stuck like a turtle. I had to help him roll over. <laughs> now oh he's staring God. at me like... Hey, buddy. You're funny. You're being so cute. That's oh, like please adorable. Not... A belly! That, um, like... Anyway. the Christine's cat from... And that's why we drink... Or no, cat, dog. She's like, he didn't realize that you could open a door by pushing on it. <laughs> oh you would just be like i can't get out and she'd go let him out i'm like no no you just let the dog figure that shit out <laughs> yeah right. she'll probably stay figure it out now that she has a baby <laughs> mm -hmm. stay asleep gordo go back to sleep okay well oh you turned cap lock on what are you doing with your tail i was like what it's like pushing <laughs> buttons on the keyboard with his tail stop it Stop rolling. I thought you said he turned cat block on. No caps lock. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. Oh my god. I'm putting that in the bloopers. No. But it, it's like Arrested Development. He's making fake block. Um, <laughs> so, this week we have a, a brand new subject to discuss for episode... 90 freaking two three three god i was so confident looking at my scribbled numbers no <laughs> it wasn't 93 mm -hmm. seven episodes from 100 yeah so... two and a half months or not two and a half <laughs> a month and a half basically that makes it seem longer um this one comes out at the end of a special month we're well into pisces season um and i am very busy as a result <laughs> planning yeah, birthday things but uh it this comes out on the 24th so no today's the 24th but i have <laughs> god damn it i'm reading my thing wrong i'm like why are you talking about it coming at the end of the month it comes out on the third because I'm looking at arson crimes line, apparently. Oh. 
<laughs> Why didn't I just ask you what we were covering? Ugh. Okay. <laughs> so since this comes out at the beginning of March. Yeah. But it's the first one after Pat's birthday, which is the 28th. So it's so funny. Mm-hmm. His is the 28th and then my friend Ellen who I met Pat through hers is the first of March so hers is always the day after oh except nice. for next year which is a leap year <laughs> yes I know a lot of Pisces in my like friend group from back home in New Brunswick um if, if we all get together like and we have to decide on something to do sometimes like honestly it's what they say is true we're kind of indecisive and like <laughs> nothing gets done nice <laughs> um but yes this one's dedicated to pat so it's all about Swedish folklore. Woo! y'all yeah happy birthday yes you happy go birthday. listen <laughs> yeah and rate i told him to go rate on spotify because i said our spotify rating is about 3.7 and i would like it to be higher i think rate review and subscribe pat Yo, click that damn yeah. like button, as those YouTubers say. Uh, him and your dad always like our Facebook posts. Every post They're... I make, I see them and they always like them. So thank you. <laughs> My family members that are still on Facebook then. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they always like them. So, Well, that's good. Um, I can't get them on the Instagram. Pat, that is. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah last week was fire heavy. it was heavy <laughs> a heavy episode yeah. it was i was just saying to you before we started recording that it was funny that they just mentioned the triangle shirtwaist fire on modern family where i was like i've seen this like twenty thousand times but now that i've covered yeah. it yeah I'm like, oh, I recognize that. And it's kind of that weird thing. You're like, you buy that car and then you see that car or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like... Didn't know what it meant before. Now we've yeah. covered it. Now I'm as smart as Alex. You know, I get it in <laughs> trivia like she did in the scene. <laughs> I'll get the question right. Maybe. Yeah. I didn't hear what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We should do more trivia sometime. That was fun when we did trivia on our own show. <laughs> yeah no um you guys can see that on patreon it was uh it was fun I remember yeah we both scored really good we didn't think we were gonna do good but we both scored surprisingly well and i think it was a tie and we yeah. had to do tie breakers or something Oh, think? yeah, because I never feel like I remember anything. You go to, like, edit the episode or write a description, and you're like, I'm a blank. What did they talk about? Yeah. Yes, 100%. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. <sighs> yeah. Well, are you going first? I um, think so. Oh, my God, I don't know. I guess we're ready. I don't think we have anything else to talk about in the top here. I can't think of anything. No. There's no promos, I think, that are going in this one, but stay tuned. We might have some fun promos and mm-hmm. maybe guest spots or things in the future. It's going to be a good year for us. Yeah. I'm saying it now. <laughs> All right. Are you going to hit us with some dark shit or just fun stuff? No, <laughs> I have. Uh, I think mine's fun. I'd say mine's pretty fun. It was for the last cryptids one we did. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, Some cute little troll guys. So I actually ended up having to redo my notes, I guess, from the first time I did it. Because even though I knew it was Swedish folklore, I somehow, when I named the episode on my Word document, I, as a placeholder, put Scandinavian. And then when I started researching, I kept researching Scandinavian stuff and they got really confused. And then when I looked at her oh. episode list, I was like, this says Swedish. And then when I was editing the arson episode, I was like, we just said next week is Swedish crimes. I was like, all my notes are Scandinavian. And then I was like, well, maybe I should look, okay. redo it. So I started <laughs> looking at stuff. And then I was like, no, I'll find like more specifically, I guess, like Swedish stuff to talk about. <laughs> so. 
I ended I... up basically redoing like half of oh, mine. Really? But it's not very long, so it wasn't bad. I like this better than what I had the first <laughs> time anyway, so. A lot of the time it's kind of that overlapping <clears throat> Venn diagram. Yeah. A lot of yeah. Scandinavian stuff is found in Sweden. Mm -hmm. um, but also, of course, Norway, uh, Finland. A bunch and... of other places, yeah. I was like, I feel like, yeah, that one's Norway, Finland, and Denmark. And then the one that always surprises me is how many countries are considered Nordic countries. That mm. seems to be like a whole shit ton more than <laughs> yeah yeah it's interesting we'll have to do one that's like Norse mythology and you know what I mean because like we haven't even done any of that since I was like oh I could do the story of Fenrir and then I was like well this isn't really just straight Norse mythology we wanted to yeah. kind of honor the country of Sweden and mine my second part there. is Norse mythology but it has mm -hmm. to do it has stuff specifically with like sweden in there too um no that's yeah. so cool it's not like there's not enough to do multiple episodes that have yeah the norse mythology yeah it's all it's overlapping right so i mm -hmm. love it <laughs> uh so my first yeah. one is i ended up doing a creature uh hopefully it's Ooh, not okay the i know i did a few creatures uh, but <laughs> the one I did was the Lindworm. Lindworm? Ooh, Does that sound familiar? Worm. That sounds creepy. Yeah, it's a little worm. Uh, it's also <laughs> known as Lind... I don't know how to pronounce it any different. Lindworm, but it's spelled uh, L-I-N-D-W-U-R-M instead of like worm as in W-O-R-M. So like worm... I I know, I want to say it like Lindworm. <laughs> right? Yeah. They have very cool musical accents. I love it. Yeah. I, like, oh, I can't fake it. Like... <laughs> oh, I know. I did yeah. some Swedish Duolingo, but I really fell off. So, yeah. My pronunciations are probably going to be pretty shite, too. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, and then it's also, there's a bunch of different words for it. There's, it's also called. Lindworm, but W Y R M as well. Okay, yeah, and... I've definitely seen that spelling of worm quite a bit. <clears throat> yeah, and then there's it's also called Lindorm, so basically worm without the W. Lindorm. Uh, <sighs> That's just gonna make yeah. me want chocolate. Lindorm, Lindorm. chocolate, <laughs> right? The best chocolate. <laughs> yeah, they're good. <laughs> It's a popular mythical creature throughout Northern and Central European folklore. So there's quite a few countries that have it, but... Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it does have quite a few different variations. The one I focused on was, like, in Swedish folklore. Yeah, uh, mine were some of mine were like that, too, where they're like, okay, it's usually called this here and has a name in yeah. this country. And so, like, I was like, okay, cool. They're found in a lot of places. So the lindworm typically lives in the deep forest and I feel like as soon as I describe it to you, you're going to know exactly what it is because it's, I had heard of it before, but I didn't know this is what it was called. So it looks like oh, a really? giant, yeah, it looks like okay. a giant serpent or a snake monster, or it's even sometimes compared to a dragon and okay. Do yeah tra like tracks i'm like it's <laughs> picturing uh, things like tremors or some other movies yeah. where they're like giant things that live in the ground <laughs> uh and the i guess it's description or portrayals kind of vary uh across different countries and then different legends and stories about them and yeah, okay. in some of the legends, lindworm are said to make everything that lie under them increase as the lindworm like physically grows. And this is, I didn't um, really get it until the source said it. it's similar to tales of dragons hoarding treasure to become richer. So their like mound of treasure gets bigger. But the lindworm, I guess, oh. is said to make whatever lies under them as they get bigger, like that will get bigger. Oh my god, the only literal reference to that I can think of, I guess, it's I like don't know. The Hobbit. <laughs> All was I can think of is The Hobbit and uh, Smog, or Smaug. 
I don't remember they had he had a big hoard, but I remember mm-hmm. in Harry Potter when they had to go into Green mm. Gods, then there was a curse True. on it that made it multiply and like also oh, get cool. super fucking hot too in Flagro or something. So everything they like touched, yeah. there would be like ten Wasn't of them, and, the... and it would also get really hot. That was one of the Horcruxes, wasn't it? When they were going for yeah, they were looking yeah. for like a cup of hufflepuff or something yeah but that's cool i mean we haven't really done a dragon's deep dive no i have like a coffee table book that we some we bought for rain i don't know my mom bought us one for rain and i was like we already have this it's all about dragons (laughs) yeah (laughs) so clearly i've done a deep dive (laughs) yeah Uh, Yeah. according to legends there are two types of lindworm the first is associated with good uh, good luck, such I put such such as shush, no <laughs> shush, good luck, shush, shush. Uh, <laughs> associated with good luck, such as the story of a prince who has been cursed and transformed into the beast, a lindworm. Oh, uh, so that's considered like good luck, which. That part okay. kind of didn't make sense to me until I found one of the tales, and I think that is the specific tale. I'll read the summary of it to you, because it ends up being a good thing, I guess. Uh, okay, okay. It's like, but yeah, it's weird. I didn't really get is it called it the was. werewolf? No. Okay, because that's the fairy tale that I did, and I was like, that sounds similar-ish. Okay, no, okay. this is the okay. it's a lindworm, and uh, it was just the, the transforming other... thing that was. I was like, hmm, oh no, this is interesting. <laughs> uh, the other type of lindworm is a bad lindworm that's considered to be dangerous and a man eater, and is known to attack humans on sight. He's a man eater, make him look full, make him look for of my love. <laughs> yeah, get nice. your Nelly Furtado on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is she Canadian? Uh, Maybe. I think so. <laughs> I feel like I will confirm, so I know for sure. <laughs> Don't sound like an idiot. Canadian? Oh, okay. Canadian singer songwriter. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, so the part that made me know that I had heard of the lindworm before, but didn't know it was called lindworm, is they're known to swallow its own tail, turning itself into a wheel and rolling away as a way uh, to pursue fleeing humans that are running away from it, and this give it gives it its nickname, Wheel Snake. So I've oh definitely gosh. seen stuff of like the snake that swallows its own tail. Yes, Pack has a yeah. tattoo of it, and it's usually yeah. called the Ouroboros. Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, there's a lindworm that like does that. Yeah, I was like, I've right. heard of well, that nobody before. Ever told me like it's yeah, like it's not like they're like this creature is called an Ouroboros, but like whenever you hear yeah. oh a picture of a snake eating its own tail, or if you hear like it's picture of an ouroboros like it's the same thing and i'm like that's so weird yeah. i was like i've heard that before interesting uh, yeah well yeah because you don't know there's also a big snake in norse mythology that's jormungandr or whatever i think i talked about him in episode yeah one, there's so. weird i don't know if that oh that's that one's different there is lindworms in Norse mythology, but that one is oh, not okay. one of the ones listed. So I think that's something a different type. It's not a lindworm. Interesting. Yeah. So they like have very yeah. There's big old like snakeys. S- snakeys. Yeah. There's like specific ones that are named uh, that I'll get to. I was like, Ooh, that cool. makes sense. Just like there's different wolves, like Fenrir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. So there's. Apparently, the lindworm is known in Middle High German. To honestly, can't tell you what that means. As a oh, lindworm, no. <laughs> uh, it's called a lintworm, lintworm. L-i-n-t-w-u-r-m. Lintworm. Okay. 
uh, and this was adopted from German into Scandinavian as Old Swedish Lindormber or the modern Swedish Lindorm, uh, which I said before. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means Lind, like Lind snake. Uh, Lind, okay. as far as I could tell, it translate it kind of has the meaning similar to like flexible uh, as well as like soft or mild uh oh. light or agile so like this okay yeah yeah uh, that makes sense and in icelandic the term linormer uh was used to translate german sources to produce the tifrex saga uh which is an <laughs> <That's> old one <laughs> yeah i was like trying to look up pronunciations the best i could and not a lot comes up right it's like i'm sure our accents are still gonna be horrible <laughs> oh yeah uh try. so the tifrex saga is an old norse chivalric chivalric i guess oh. it's like a I hope it's like a saga of like chivalry stories kind of <laughs> I hope that's chivalric saga that's adapted from the continent from the late okay. 13th century so it's super old like these sagas I guess it's like a collection of stories oh okay could be like I've yeah heard of the, the prose edda which seems mm. to be some sort of old collection of stories of some kind too. Yeah, that one's yeah. pretty famous. Interesting. Hmm. So in Swedish folklore, the Lindworm or Lindorm uh, traditionally appear as giant forest serpents. Normally in oh. Swedish folklore, forest. it's different than they're described as like dragons because in Swedish folklore, they're more snake-like. They don't have any limbs. Sometimes they have like legs okay. or they have like arms uh okay that's a, like i'm picturing now more like a chinese dragon where they definitely if they have legs they're smaller and they don't really have yeah. arms yeah more serpent yeah. like okay in swedish folklore they don't have any limbs and often they just live between rocks that are deep in the forest uh they're said to normally be a dark color with the like underbelly or the underside being a brighter color and along their spine they can have dorsal fins like a fish so like a oh really yeah uh or they can have dun, them dun, 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 dun. you see it coming <laughs> through the ground <laughs> oh that'd be creepy yeah <laughs> uh or it it also is said it could have a mane like a horse and oh yeah what should be kind of weird i didn't Nay. see any picture <laughs> yeah uh it's sometimes called main snake or manorm in swedish huh. Linormans. yeah uh it's also known to spit a foul milk like substance out of its mouth that can blind enemies so, like, Ew. don't be within spitting distance i guess Watch out for you. camels, they spit. No. Yeah. <laughs> like oh. a poisonous milk. mouth milk. <laughs> yeah, that's... Isn't that mouth milk? <laughs> <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> so gross. It's... Oh, yeah. Where you know what that's like... going to give you? There's a yeast infection thing you can get in your <clears throat> mouth that's called thrush. <laughs> oh, I've heard of that. Sorry, so Gordo just like the mouth milk. <laughs> coming yeah, out Gordo us. just turned around and tried to stretch out and almost pushed the lamp off the table. Oh my god, you fat ass! No, <laughs> sorry, I won't body shame Gordo. <laughs> now he's just awkwardly curled up, like he's the most uncomfortable cat in the world. As I hold this lamp, what man? We had like two whole things where he was up on his actual cat perch and today he's like i know eh, today he's being a shit <laughs> uh boop okay i booped his he job. wants to be uh, near you he wants to make you feel better <laughs> yeah uh so lindworm eggs are said to be laid under the bark of the oh shit i didn't look at this up 
<laughs> it didn't get underlined. That's why a word didn't help me out. Uh, it, didn't. <laughs> it says it was spelled correctly, so I didn't pay attention to it. The bark of a tilia <laughs> cordata tree. Uh, mm. And I think it got, it was kind of confusing how the source like said it, but it said because of lind, and I think it meant because of lind in lindworm. Uh, because the Tilia cordata tree is also called a linden tree in North America and lind in Swedish. Uh, okay. So the the hmm. lindworm eggs being laid under that tree uh, kind of makes sense because it's called lind or linden. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, or Tilia cordata. <laughs> <laughs> Something totally different. It's that name yeah <laughs> oh probably yeah uh Maybe. so once hatched they slither away from that tree and they make a home in a pile of rocks and once fully grown they're extremely long as you could probably assume um, <laughs> yeah. the belief in the lindorm the giant limbless serpent persisted uh late into the 19th century in some places with sweden uh, saying that they were encountering the giant snakes, sometimes equipped with a long mane, uh, like well into the 19th century. Rockin' and... red. Rockin' yeah. hair. <laughs> I know, I just like keep some, shaking my head. Like Some Fabio hair. You. Yeah. <laughs> a like you're, in a, like you're in a Pantene commercial. Uh. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Those herbal essence ones, those were the Yeah. They're like, oh my god, I'm washing my hair. You're like, <laughs> are you I'm now? In, now I'm in a stream. You're like, oh, <laughs> but that's so clean. Uh it's so satisfying. <laughs> yeah. Uh so yeah, these tales of seeing the Lindorn persisted, and even in 1884 in Sweden, there was a cash reward that was being offered for capturing a specimen, like capturing one of the Lindorm, dead or alive. However, no one was ever oh, no. able to claim it. Oh, uh, God. Okay. Yeah. Dead or alive. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> uh, Gordo, oh, I'm God. just worried about this lamp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Off the rails. So, just quickly in Central European uh, kind of folklore, in different areas, the Lindorm usually resembles a dragon or something similar. It generally has a scaly serpentine body, a dragon's head, and what's described as two clawed forelimbs, uh, so like arms or legs. And sometimes they also have okay. wings. Like a dragon does. <laughs> the way your hands just went, I was like, tiny wings. little wings. <laughs> they can't, wings. like, support them. <laughs> right? I can't fly. Yeah. <laughs> I also thought of a snake with wings that had no other limbs. So it's just, like, a snake with wings. That would also be kind of cute. Well, there's, like, fish that have wings. I don't know. Animals be crazy, yo. Yeah. Makes no sense. Uh, no, there's no way to know <laughs> but there are actually pictures of the people have died of the lindworm I forgot to say they're in the drive and then there's a picture of this guy which um, I think is the last picture I think like four or something of the lindworm uh, because some oh, examples okay. of like statues of the lindworm there's a Ooh. 16th century lindworm statue at Lindworm Fountain in Kaliginfurt, Austria. And it has like Oh wow. Awesome. It has four limbs. So it has like two front, two back, and then it has two wings. Uh and it's pretty cool. I think it was like I can't remember what it's going up against. Is it like a little knight or something? It's like standing in front of it. It was pretty cute. Number four, uh, I said. Oh, sorry. Number five is the like fountain statue. Oh, yeah. There's right. something like trying to defeat it. It was pretty cute. Aww. Basically, looks like a little dragon. He's adorable. Yeah. 
it's 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 body shape and stuff is a lot yeah. like toothless from how to drink yeah it. <laughs> very cute so uh freaking adorable okay so that's like I a 16th it. century statue from like freaking 1500s it's crazy wow and most of the limbed depictions uh imply that lindworms do not walk on those two limbs but instead they move like a lizard or a snake and use their oh. arms for traction to like help them go faster Oh yeah, they're just kind of the belly thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. crawling. Oh, interesting. Uh, yes, there's a couple of good carvings and stuff too. Of it yeah. all, snaky like and yeah. There's one picture that was on itself. A couple pictures that are from like a shield. Yeah, uh, oh, that's really cool. In Norway. Oh, and then there's a a shield in Sweden. I think. Oh, runic inscription. Sorry. So it's like a runic yeah, but like it's but... on if it's on a stone, it looks like it's almost meant to depict a shield. I think so. It's got like yeah, a it's... border and a cross on it, and then a bunch yeah. of squiggly things that are like you're like is that definitely at first shield then, like, shaped. No. Yeah. 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 Uh, Eleventh century Sweden. Holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's really old. Um, in Norse mythology. The Linormer in Old Norse, meaning ensnaring snake, were serpent like dragons mm. with two arms and no legs. So a little bit different than like specifically the Sweden one with no limbs. Um, I have this a big they have head and little arms. Big arms. <laughs> Rex big from arms. Toy Story. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> my last little bit is just mostly in different tales and folklore. Uh, personal yeah. encounters and listener stories <laughs> yeah, right. uh, in Norse mythology some of the most famous Linorm Linworms uh, was the dwarf Fafnir who was turned into a draconic draconic Linworm uh, from the poetic Eda or Eda yes that's the poetic okay, that's on. Eda thing yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe it's a collection or yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so did that's you say he was a dwarf? Yeah, it says was he... the dwarf Fafnir. I think that's the name right. Ooh. Um, they all have such fun names. <laughs> I've heard of Fafnir before. Oh really? Um, I haven't. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where I would have heard it. Interesting. Uh there was also uh Nita Gear. I think that's how you say it. Uh, along with other lindworms, are the ones that end up gnawing at the roots of Yggdrasil. <gasps> really? Yeah. So the they're the creatures tree. that are like gnawing at the at the roots of it. Those are lindworms. Oh yeah, because they're always doing that, right? And once yeah. they get through it, <clears throat> maybe that's when they, we have fucking what is the apocalypse called there in Norse? Ragnarok. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's part oh of it. Um, yeah, yeah Fenrir world... has a part in that story too. Yeah, uh, yeah. So they're gnawing at Yggdrasil, the world tree in Norse mythology. Okay. Uh, Pat has a others... tattoo of that too. <laughs> yeah, I think is that one on him? Oh, okay. I can't yeah. remember where that was. Um, he has a lot. <laughs> there's a bunch of when I met him, other he had, ones like, too. Sorry. <laughs> oh, there was a bunch of other ones I couldn't get pronunciations from. There oh, was I bet. Um, other linworms include Grabaker. Uh, okay. Raph. You mean Fuller. that didn't just come up on Google? No. <laughs> it's the worst. You're like. I mean, even when I put know. it in, it came up with different spellings, and it was like, how to pronounce this? And it was like some auto generated, <laughs> like Siri basically trying to pronounce it. And you're like, no, this isn't helpful. <laughs> how would a white person pronounce you know yeah an yeah. english speaker pronounce this in this case i guess yeah you're like no i know how i would pronounce it how is it right phonetically yeah. i would pronounce it phonetically <laughs> uh, the correct? There's, <laughs> yeah there's also opnir and southnir okay. uh and his sons goen and mean but does like Aww. Does not look like mean, but that's 
how how the internet said um (laughs) but that one at least said it was like the pronunciation was provided by a male from sweden so i think that one's better (laughs) it's it's hard honestly we could probably spend not that we shouldn't try but we could probably spend time looking it up and then still people would cringe or whatever oh yeah I'm um, always impressed when people pronounce Canadian provinces correctly. I'm like, good for you! <laughs> yeah. You said Saskatchewan! <laughs> Saskatchewan! Yeah. Or like, Ogo Pogo in Okanagan, BC. And then they're like, one person was like, okay, I tried really hard at that one. I was like, you did good! <laughs> yeah. I, I was just gonna say those, that. <laughs> right? Just like when I was listening to Crimes and Consequences, and they said like Banff one time, and I was like, oh god, <laughs> it's the Banff, Alberta. Yeah, Banff. Okay. And I was okay. like, oh, I just cringed. To be fair, then... we are such a big country that I don't know yeah. if I knew all the goddamn Western pronunciations before I came out here. It's like, what is it, no, Banff, or like? I would think that we had a girl that moved from out west to out east and then I was like oh all your A's sound different like what do you is it bump what do you say <laughs> you know like we almost would say like oh our A's different I mean, it's like America right people will say Canadian accent and I'm like okay you can say Canadian accent and maybe have a general one but at the same time you can, people yeah. can sound super different from one end of the country Nova to Scotia the other. <laughs> oh yeah Nova or just Scotia. different well, I'm, like, technically from Nova Scotia, too. Like, I was born there, and then I think of my dad, who still lives there, and I'm like, he does not have one of those thick, like, yeah. Nova Scotian, like, rural accents. <laughs> but no, like, yeah, it's, it's just rural areas, you can get super thick accents. And Newfoundlanders, yeah. oh, man. I tell you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> It's tick. <laughs> the accent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's an Austrian tale. Uh, I don't have the name of this one. Huh. I think it just said this in the thing saying uh, it's from the 13th century tells of a lindworm that lived near oh, uh, Klagenfurt where that statue is. Uh And flooding was threatening the travelers that were along the river. Um, And the presence of the lindworm in the area was blamed for this flooding that was threatening the travelers. And On what evidence? (laughs) Right? (laughs) There was a duke that was offering a reward to anyone who could capture it. And some young men tied a bull, like a bull, to a chain and then... (laughs) When the lindworm swallowed the bull that was tied to the chain, it hooked the lindworm to the chain like a fish, and then they basically captured the lindworm and like killed it because it was attached to the chain. What? Okay, and you yeah. said a bull like a male cow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So just like wow. swallowed a bull whole. Yeah. Uh, That's some bullshit, yo. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> that is so weird. All right, and then it works. <laughs> uh, it's also said that the, because I guess the lindworm sheds its skin like snakes and reptiles do, so Ew. the, yeah, it's probably gross, just like in Harry Potter or whatever. Yeah, it'd be huge. The basilisk <laughs> when they find all that skin in the tunnel. <laughs> um, buckets of skin. Yeah. Apparently, the shed skin of a lindworm is believed to greatly increase a person's knowledge about nature and medicine. Which is kind of interesting, yeah. But who would dare to? What are you going to do, eat it? (laughs) I don't know, yeah. Oh my god. I don't know how you're supposed to use it. Um, And (laughs) also in legends, lindworms are often very large. And they eat cattle and human corpses, sometimes invading churchyards and eating the dead bodies from cemeteries. Uh, oh, because they're underground already. Ooh. Yeah. 
Well, that would have made... Is it Tremors? Whatever the ones where they have, yeah, <laughs> movies where they have giant underground earthworms. You're like, if you would have just eaten the dead people in the cemeteries and not bothered us, it would have been fine. <laughs> Ever since I watched meat. Uh, watch Dune, the first thing I think of is always oh, Dune. Yes. Or like okay, the sandworms. Yeah, so I knew there was at least another one that I wasn't thinking yeah. of. <laughs> nice. With the rock. Yeah, it's always the one I think of. Um, so there's, oh, there's a story. This was from mythusfandom.com. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I went there too. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a story called Prince Lindworm. So this may have been the Prince okay. story they were talking about when they said there's a good Lindworm and a bad one. And they said the one was like a prince that got turned into a Lindworm. I think it's supposed to be this story. So, oh, it's hard. Sometimes I want to read like every damn fairy tale on a website when we're like doing yeah. Ukrainian folklore, whatever country folklore. I'm like, oh, all these have such cool names. <laughs> the right? Lindworm, the Princess, and the Wolf. Like, you're just all like, what yeah. does that mean? <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, this one was the summary that they had. Um, I don't think it's the whole story, it might be like a summarized, translated version. Uh, mm -hmm. It said okay. that in Scandinavian folklore, a childless queen asked an old crone, who's most likely a witch, how she could bear children. Okay. The, the old a great woman. Start. <laughs> right? The old woman tells her to eat two onions. Mm. Like an apple. Just bah, <laughs> eat that onion. Yeah. However, oh, the queen Some forgot to. So gross. Mm. Uh, however, the queen forgot to peel the first onion, and but that wasn't in the direction. Now that's oh. disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, when she bore twins, although the second son was perfect, the first son was instead born as a lindworm. And oh no! Yeah, as they grew older, the lindworm prince insists that his younger brother cannot marry until he himself finds a bride. As such, many chosen okay. maidens are bought before the Lindworm as each girl is displeased displeased by him? That doesn't make sense. I'd say, like, as each girl displeases him, he eats them all. Um, so they oh, don't make okay. him happy, so he eats them. Oh, the... Right, right, right. So it's Beauty yeah. and the Lindworm. <laughs> so <far>. yeah basically <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> uh a shepherd's daughter is to be brought before the lindworm prince as a bride candidate she talks to the same old crone as before who gives her instructions following the crone's advice the girl presents herself to the prince wearing every dress she owns which makes could I be wearing any more clothes? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> right. um, I was like, every dress she owns. When I was like reading the summary, I was like, wait, what? Starts doing lunges. Lunges. <laughs> oh, I love oh it. Oh my god. Um, I the have to flee after this, so I, <laughs> I want to be prepared. <laughs> right. Uh, the Lindworm tells her to take off her dresses, but she insists that he shed his skin for each dress she removes. Which is, like, okay. interesting. Eventually, his human form is actually revealed beneath the last skin, because she, like, has that many dresses on, and he's removed that many layers of his skin that now he's, like, a human again. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. They have layers. <laughs> yeah. Lindworms have layers, like an onion and like Shrek, okay? Yeah. Uh, some... A glass onion. No. <laughs> uh, some versions of the story, like the Lindworm Prince, omit the Lindworm's twin. Um, and then, oh. so it's just the one like Lindworm as the prince. He doesn't have a brother. And mm. then um, some variations have the gender of the soothsayer or like crone or witch or whatever varies mm. and it's kind of interesting because a similar tale actually occurs in the 1952 novel the voyage of the dawn treader by c.s lewis 
Okay, yeah, I read that. That's part of the Narnia series. Yeah. So uh, okay, Don't I this. <laughs> I like skim read a couple of the books. I do, not this. <laughs> but yeah, Aslan dies. Okay, what is this Jesus <laughs> allegory? I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where's Prince Caspian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these Christian overtones are. I'm looking for give the me, hot. <laughs> yeah, give me Ben Barnes. Okay, always. Oh, but fantasy Caspian wasn't everything. really good until we got all that ya fiction yeah <laughs> yeah i love ben barnes i'm That's not saying there. twilight started some good things but it probably did <laughs> um so my second half uh is pretty short but it was something i stumbled across and this kind of has to do with uh the bifrost or as one website told me it should be pronounced bifrost <laughs> Which I could not get over. (laughs) Who has ever said that? Bifrost. Or Bifroost, maybe. I don't know. I just thought it was so funny. I had to include it. Bifrost. Oh my god. (laughs) Now I won't be able to get that out of my head. When Pat (laughs) and D character's last name is Frost. (laughs) Is it? All I could think of was the Marvel movies. And every time they go to say Bifrost, somebody says Bifrost. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that would just be so stupid. Thor, we have to go to Biff Roast. Uh, I'm gonna biff you. <laughs> right in the roast. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. I snorted. So I'm just gonna say Bifrost. Um, oh, my even God, if that's, please. <laughs> yeah. So that's the only, like, way I know how to pronounce it. Thanks, Marvel movies. Uh, it's like when someone says, like, Uranus or something. I'm just like, Yeah, hey, and you're like, no thanks. You know, yeah, I know what you're going for, but also... And then I swear I heard someone say like a third pronunciation the other day, which I was just like, I have never even, what was that? Uranus. I don't know. I was just like, I can't. Um, I'll try and think of it. So anybody that doesn't know, the Biff Roast is <laughs> the, <laughs> the rainbow bridge that connects Asgard, yes. the world of the Acer tribe of gods, to Midgard or Midgard, the world of humanity. Mm-hmm. And the Bifrost is guarded by the god Heimdall. Which, so is hot. it he played by Idris Elba? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> so during Ragnarok, the giants will breach Heimdall's defenses and cross the bridge to storm Asgard and slay the gods. Uh, so that how you kind of said Ragnarok uh, uh, okay yeah Ragnarok the, has a lot going on <laughs> yeah uh, the etymology of the world word Bifrost is uncertain the original form of the name seems to be Bilroost which suggests the meaning along the lines of the fleeting glimpsed rainbow which is cool oh, uh, however, and maybe where they got that different pronunciation yeah. Beef roost or whatever you just Maybe. Said. Okay. <laughs> so literally I copied it from the website. It says pronounced roughly B I F dash dub dash R O A S T, which is if that's not Biff Roast, I don't know what Biff Roast is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally Biff Roast. What do you pronounced mean, roughly like Biff Roast? <laughs> It's like beef anyway. roast, but better. <laughs> Biff. Uh, it's roast beast. <laughs> right? From Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Uh, mm. However, if the the bifrust, like with yeah. F in there instead of L, if that's more correct, the meaning would more likely, instead of be the fleetingly glimpsed rainbow, it would likely be the shaking or trembling rainbow. Uh Ooh. Yeah, it said either way, kind of these translations and the words reinforce the fragile nature of the bridge, just like the fragile nature of a rainbow. Um... Or how easily you can fall off Rainbow Road in Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's got um, no side barriers. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't bowling. That uh, shit is dangerous. <laughs> so... Odin, the chief god and ruler of Asgard, believed 
to live in Valhalla and is preparing for Ragnarok which is a series of events that lead to the end of the gods and the world ends up beginning again. Uh, Ragnarok is said to be Odin's greatest battle and that he would need the bravest warriors at his side. Uh, yeah, makes as sense. A re- right? As a result, during every battle on Earth, Odin would pick the warriors who would die and would join him in Valhalla. And the Valkyries, which they had in the last couple Thor movies, I'm so happy. Um, oh yes <laughs> Tessa Thompson or whatever <laughs> yeah they're so cool they should have their own yeah. like separate movie uh oh yeah yeah because there's some pretty badass female yeah, warriors cool. I think yeah um so the Valkyries these female warriors on horseback uh wear mm-hmm. lots of armor they carry spears and shields and they're charged with leading Odin's chosen warriors to Valhalla so like the men that die on earth um oh, cool. they kind of guide them and the reason why i got into this is because uh it came up when i was looking up stuff that the vikings actually believed that the northern lights that illuminate the sky were actually the reflections of the valkyries armor as they led the warriors to odin which oh, i love I think that it's really cool yeah yeah and I mean, they're pretty in... spectacular looking Right? I've never seen them in person, but it would be amazing. I know. Um, I'm like, you're supposed to be able to see them somewhere around here. (laughs) Sometimes. Yeah, we're supposed to be able to. Yeah, my friend that lives kind of south of the city, she always has the best pictures. And I'm always like, damn you, I'm so jealous. Oh, jeez. I know. I'm like signing up for every like app thing that will tell you. And then sometimes it gives me like an email that I see like the next morning. They're like, oh, yeah by the way at like 3 a.m <laughs> you could like, look thanks. at aurora borealis <laughs> yeah, yeah. <fuck> <laughs> um yeah. yeah so there's different things so it could be the valkyrie's armor like reflections off of it in mm. other legends they say the aurora borealis is the breath actually like exhaled breath of the brave soldiers who died in combat oh um, which is also cool and yeah. Other legends say that the Aurora is believed to actually itself be the Bifrost Bridge. Oh, which also is pretty cool. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that is cool. I like that. I like that theory. My last little bit was just that in Sweden, the Aurora Borealis is seen as a portent of good news. And. Um, the site said many Swedish ancestors believed that the the lights or the northern lights are believed to be a gift from benevolent gods that provide warmth and light in the form of a volcano in the north. I typed I that, mean... but I do not remember reading that. Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it all <I> makes... Like, <laughs> how does the sentence end? Uh... <laughs> I'm along for the ride. I'm cold right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> but it does like and we live in a cold, you know, country yeah. as well. Many we don't have volcanoes up here. <laughs> no, not really. But I was gonna say, yeah, many parts are you know, on the same parallels as Sweden mm. gets yeah. cold in places here too. And so like I can see how people would be like I'm gonna see something amazing in the sky even though it's really cold out it's like yeah it's so nice it's like a spring is coming or like i can see it being yeah. a good omen and you would right you it's beautiful it how would that, that be a, a bad omen yeah. it's so beautiful yeah exactly exactly um yeah elsewhere in the country in sweden they were uh the lights were believed to be the the light reflection from large shoals of herring and they end up bode well, boating well for local fishermen, and the Swedish okay. farming, yeah, Swedish farming community saw the lights as heralding a good harvest in the coming year. So, like again, just like good news and I mean, good things to come, which is cool. We we have mentioned how big a freaking what's it called a uh, school of herring can get. Oh yeah. In- Bacon, <laughs> bacon farts. 
Bacon farts. Five yeah, billion large. bacon farts. School of herring. Um, oh my god, what episode? Was that the Oceans episode? Yes. And then yeah, talked, Mysteries of was... the Oceans or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, you guys. I mean, fish farts fooled a bunch of like military guys and stuff and yeah. almost started I World War III. There was bacon so. in the ocean. There was bacon yeah, in the it ocean. Sounds like frying bacon. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's what I ended up looking up. It was kind of cool. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah. I I like the idea of the Northern Lights. I hadn't really thought before yes. about what different places would kind of view them as. There was a lot more on the website. It was the com, and it had different Aurora oh, okay. like legends and I only I only mm-hmm. took the ones that were like Nordic or Scandinavian and then like Sweden kind of stuff. There was like a bunch of other ones that talked about kind of what it means in different countries. Ugh. There's stuff about like if a woman's pregnant, like she's not supposed to see the Northern Lights and like okay, stuff yeah. like that in different countries. Yeah. That sounds familiar. I'm like, did I read about that or hear about that or maybe write it down to cover it on something yeah. before? Because yeah, I'm like, I feel like maybe it was mixing up things but talking about like the wild hunt too but yeah it's like Hmm. some people believe oh that's the souls of you know unborn children or different things Uh, yeah I feel like there was many different that's interesting we could definitely deep dive on that again yeah weather phenomenon and Mm, yeah like star phenomenons (laughs) <laughs> i'm like what am i trying to say star meteorological and cosmic things that people what they believed about them in folklore like oh yeah meteors and stuff yeah <laughs> i mean you come yeah a we, talked, we about talked about that with comet yeah hallie's comet yeah that was interesting. yeah because that, that was, was way a, back yeah that was like a bad omen for people because it always seemed to be seen when there was lots of shit going down so. That was in episode one, too. Yeah, it was. Also. Okay, we're definitely 92... having some callbacks to episode one. 92 episodes ago. We sound so much better. You guys, our yeah. mics. I'm just like it. I'm sorry about the first few in the episodes. Titanic much when better. she's like 84 years ago. Like yeah. 100 years ago. <laughs> oh my god, my supervisor loves that friggin' gif. <laughs> He's like... It'll be fixed in 84 years. Or no. <laughs> I don't know. He's like caught by the train. He's like, I'll be back in 84 years. <laughs> I think my favorite is like a few moments later from SpongeBob. Oh my God. Because the. Sometime later. Yeah. <laughs> the girl I watch for um, my hair or something, it goes, she always uses, and it goes, a few moments later and it like comes up on the screen and then it cuts to like something that's like a second long and it just says like four hours later <laughs> it's like three <laughs> days later and it's like this one episode of spongebob square something <laughs> did you say her name was maher something uh no it's oh. mains by mel oh i was like I heard my no, hair the girl or my I hair followed, or something. Yeah, to do okay. the girl I follow on YouTube to do my hair, like how you style oh, okay. it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Not George Maharis from Arrested Development. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we'll be right back for more mm-hmm. fun, fun, fun. <laughs> yeah. I need a refill. All right, all right. So for my section of Swedish folklore, um, oh, I got to dip back into one that I mentioned on, oh, God, the Deep Dark Woods cryptids one? Yeah. So oh, okay. She was called the Skogsra. Yeah. She was a woods witch, sort of. That's That's what I had learned about her during that one, but. I got like a dis- different perspective on it just from a different website on this one. And I thought, Oh no, I, you know, you don't do a deep dive. You, you sometimes just get one 
kind yeah. of look at it from one website or whatever. Um, so I, I don't really remember some of any of this. So you could tell me if maybe I've talked about it before. Maybe. Maybe the listeners can. <laughs> yeah, I'll see what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here's your trivia time. No. Right? Oh. Um, I don't I don't remember there being other names. So sometimes like the Skogsra is called the Haldra. Um mm. or the Tall Maja, which is the Pine Tree Mary, apparently. Pine <laughs> Tree Mary, okay. That sounds fun. That's interesting. That's a little easier to remember, probably because the other ones are Swedish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the origin story that I came across was a woman had one day only washed half of her children. Suddenly, what? God knocked on her cottage door. <laughs> These are my words, by the way. <laughs> washed half uh, of her children? Like half of each child or half of her children in total numbers? I want to say like two out of the four children, okay. but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm wa- okay, kids, I'm only going to wash your left half. <laughs> Literally just... um reading a book it's this one series pat bot that's um got magic and stuff so this guy's a sorcerer and he's like dealing with someone and like oh i will only take half of the children from here to the river bank if you agree to this kind of thing and he's like yeah sure and then he's like oh shit i gotta be really careful and then like he literally takes half of each child like bisects on the torso (laughs) oh yeah it's terrible (laughs) Um, Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't read these books all at once because they're a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my god, okay. Wow. <laughs> Listen, dense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, They're like death something, death's baby sister. There's a lot of death in the title. Oh. I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to read it and let you guys know in case anyone's interested. <laughs> Um, okay, so half of her children are washed, and God comes knocking on the door, I guess. Um, so apparently deeply ashamed, she hid them from his sight. Uh, I mean, good try. <laughs> Don't look, they're unwashed. <laughs> they're getting in the tub right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they had to use one tub for eight people, come on. <laughs> uh, so he commanded them to be forever hidden from humanity what? and they became known <laughs> as the holders or the hidden folk oh my god so that was one origin it's story. rude yeah they were dirty <laughs> wow that's a bit of an overreaction <laughs> who would think that of a god <laughs> <laughs> I do think I remember reading some about this, how the Halders, Hidden Folk, Skogsra, you know, whatever their alias they're going by, they are kind to people that are burning charcoal. Um, (laughs) Like, people that have a charcoal kiln in particular, she would watch Hmm. over that for you, and then you would leave the Skogsra little gifts, like little food or provisions or something and they would Cute. give you a little present okay um and then apparently though on the other hand when she wants to charm you she can be dangerous and just hiding her own true you know look by hiding her cow's tail by tying it in a, in a knot under her skirt oh so she's got a cow's tail <laughs> apparently okay you don't remember that either because i didn't remember that from the first set of notes not that i really looked back Hmm. i was like cow's tail all right (laughs) yeah um (laughs) and there are male ones and they're the holdrakal holdrakal i don't know probably terribly pronounced pronounce <laughs> but they are l- apparently less pretty than their female equivalent and they're sometimes even described as grotesque which i thought was pretty mean <laughs> described as everything from less pretty to grotesque <laughs> <laughs> i 
especially because I'm like Jeez. scrolling down this listicle or whatever, <laughs> and then the next picture I see is of this next guy, and I'm like, they are not grotesque. This is like, I literally wrote hottie with a body. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so on that, they are called the Knack. This is a water spirit who Ooh. is completely Knack Knack Paddywhack? <laughs> Nick Knack, yeah. No, you gotta be careful. You have to Google, like, the Knack Sweden, or else something else came up with Knack K-N with the silent K or whatever. Oh, that's what came up on... When I was looking yeah. up stuff, and I was like, no, not the knack, and I scrolled down. But it it had a K in it. I'm sure it did. Yeah, I think that's a different thing. Yeah, oh, from okay. America or something. Because you had mentioned, I remembered Scoggs, and I remembered knack. Those are the only two I remember that you said you were covering. So when I was- Right, but I don't, I didn't text them to you or anything, so it's not no. like you had any spelling. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this one does go by quite a few names. Mm -hmm. Ooh, actually, I have- oh, okay. Oh, I have more of his names actually a little bit down here further. Mm. <laughs> but the the striking part is that he, they usually hang out nude playing the violin as a male Ooh. water spirit. <laughs> so I thought that picture was Sounds the Hulder nice. Gall being described oh. as grotesque. And I was like, he's what? <laughs> <laughs> he's playing violin by the water. I'm pretty sure this guy's supposed to look hot. Um, <laughs> what am I missing here? Yeah. Funny. Yeah. Um, the Nacken, I guess, means the neck in English. So that could give us a bit of the English <gasps> translation. They're Nacken. The They're Nacken. They're Nacken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those Nackens are Nacken. Necking, as in like making out, then people are talking about yeah. nagging and negging these days, and I just don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Um, he apparently first appeared in the Viking era, so he's pretty old. Mm. Sorry, I have my notes seem to be almost like in two different segments. Um, because <clears throat> I did have some of the other names too, but they're pretty much the same. The Nicker or Nicker, Old Norse, English mm. was Neck, and Faroese and Icelandic mm. um, language. It's Nicker, like they all sound like they're pronounced Nicker, Nickor, Old English, um, except for another Swedish dialect variation, which was looks like Stromkarlen. And oh, totally different. <laughs> Yeah, that one was goes a little bit off <laughs> on its own. Um, you're like, how do these dialects, these people moved far away from their other <laughs> Yeah. Cousins. And then I believe this one said it was more, more common in Norwegian, where apparently this, hmm. you know, thing can also be found like you came across or whatever. Like, yeah, <sighs> they don't stick to borders. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is uh, in Norwegian, it's the Grim or the Fossagrim, and I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but oh, okay. that was a different name. <laughs> I thought the Grim was a dog. Yes, exactly, and it is spelled like, like a Grim. Hmm. Yeah, and then Fossagrim. I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I learned that they are Germanic in origin. Quote, they are shape-shifting water spirits who usually appear in human form. Um, also read uh, in some places that it can be more of an omen of imminent drowning. Oh, like a yeah. siren kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of luring you into the water. Luring you to the water, the drowning. He's dangerous. Yeah. Um. Or he's an omen, quote, screaming at a certain spot of water where someone will drown and at times causing the accident his, himself. So it depends, oh, okay. I guess. <laughs> hmm. um, in some versions, he resides in a river where people regularly drown themselves. Oh, what's that? 
I know. Does that feel like an old-fashioned like suicide bridge or something? Yeah. <laughs> um, and when no one does drown for a long time, he cries out, the time has come, but the man is not yet there. End quote. What? Okay. Sure. Then some random person will be compelled to run to the river and off himself, even if people try to like physically hold him Aww. back. That's sad. I, I don't like that. No. Sounds like he really can compel you. Yeah. However, if quote unquote properly approached, he may teach a musician to play so beautifully that the trees dance and the waterfalls stop at his music. Sounds fun. <laughs> right? I mean, that sounds nice. <laughs> but beware, this could come at a very high price unless you know of a way to escape him afterwards. So. It's still, it's still risky. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> From the old Norse uh, word for him, Nicker, Nicker, I'm not sure. It means river horse. So it might then not come as a shock that one version appears like a horse in the river. <laughs> okay. I think I talked about a buff, like horse river thing before. Oh, okay. Okay. There does seem to be yeah. a, a few. Um, This one does have another name that I found that I don't know. Baka Hastin or Brook Horse. I mean, doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, they compare it to a Scottish Kelpie, as well. Um, apparently because it likes to, you know, drown. Appear as a white horse, let children ride on it. And then as they all climb up there, it even can get longer and longer for them to sit on the back. And then it yeah. drowns them all in the, the river. That sounds so familiar. Hold on. I have to, like, go look. <laughs> that I have to look so on familiar. our website. Because even the only reaction to all the children drowning. <laughs> no, because I talked about that. In... Okay, okay. It could have been it was like people. Did we do that in the Scottish folklore one? No, I'm sure it was the water. Oh. Or maybe I just talked about mermaids in the water one. Hold on. So I don't remember what episode I did it in. But it was like the same thing. It would like turn into a horse and it would get you to get on its back and then it would its back would like become sticky and you would be stuck on its back and then it would run into the water and drown you oh, okay and yeah. you don't know if that's because it was a a, a, a kelpie i don't like think a, a so kelpie. no i'm sure there's a few that like yeah i'm sure there that isn't the only other one but one thing i did write it was like it does it's not any cozy horse from the land of Fillory. Because <laughs> oh, from the magicians. I... <laughs> the big fat horse or something they find out is real. That one's yeah. like Narnia, that book. And that was... Okay, yeah, I just book. found it. It Did you? was... Yeah, because I was like, I'm looking for a picture of a buff horse. I can see it in my head. Um, <laughs> it's from our... Sco <laughs> it was from our Scottish folklore episode. It was the... Each usagey, each usage. Each oh usage. my god! If it's, it's probably Gaelic. I don't know how yeah, to say it. Yeah, it's like <laughs> each and then dash u i s g e. Each. Oh usage. god! Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Um, but yeah, it would like it would lure you onto its back, not necessarily children, but then it would its back would become like sticky. And then you would be stuck on its back, and then it would, like, run into the water, and it would drown you. Sticky, even. Yeah. Wow. So that you couldn't get off its back. So it's, right, it's kind of similar to figure out what this. it's up to. Yeah. Because <laughs> this on it, you said it lures people or babies onto its back, and then it drowns them. Yeah. 
just looks like a little pony. <laughs> that you and like the kids are like, yeah. sure. No, oh, it's so sad. It's what they had to teach. It's what they had to tell their kids to keep them from getting on strange horses' backs. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Right. Don't ride wild horses. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't you get on their backs? You see. Oh my god. No. Gaelic. Ugh. I'll have to start learning that on Duolingo. Then I'll really sound like, um... Oh, what's her face? One of the wine and crime girls did that. The one that just had a baby. Kenyon. Mm. <laughs> she loves Outlander, too. <laughs> oh, too. But then they're... I didn't want to be like... I was like, oh, they're all rolling her eyes at her because she's learning... She'd be like, oh, Sc- uh, yes, I am learning Scottish Gaelic on, you know, Duolingo. And then you're like, oh, we know. <laughs> anyway. Um, so this one also lures other horses and their riders into the water. Hmm. This is kind of fun. This is from a a tumblr post from someone who's it was tricksters make this world dot tumblr <laughs> but nice what was their quote their header and their little bloggy thing was joanna or johanna late 20s i'm swedish so nothing you can do to me is worse than january <laughs> <laughs> it's worse than january I could so hard relate. I was like, I love you already. Anyway, I think she was... I think she was the writer of this Tricksters Makes the World Tumblr. Anyway, mm-hmm. the quote was about the... The brook horse could be made to plow and would do so faster than any natural horse, either voluntarily, as a trick to trap people and drag them into the water, or by being tricked itself. Okay. Yeah. The other one used to do that. It said you could employ it on a farm and it would trick you into getting on its back in the form of a horse doing farm work and then it would run into the water and drown you. Okay, either way, it's, wow. it's tricking you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's is the only time where it said, like, by getting tricked itself. So I didn't know what that meant. Hmm. Um, anyone who climbed onto its back would be unable to give up. So. Hmm. All right. And uh, sorry, that was the end of that quote. One way to stop the Nacken, <clears throat> regardless of their form, was to just say his name. Doing so would f- force him to release his victims. Steel also mm-hmm. worked against him. Thrown into the path of the brook horse, it would stop him from getting to the water and break its power. Water lilies oh, okay. are known in Swedish as Nackroser literally neck roses from a belief that he hid under them end quote Mm. that was cute i love lilies and i love lilies yeah yeah they also come up again in my notes (laughs) so i wonder if they had more significance in swedish folklore i don't know Yeah, you don't want to get too many neck tattoos, but <laughs> I did have a friend that was in the military when Pat was, and he ended up getting a tattoo on his neck that was a rose, some kind of flower. They don't oh. love if you get a visible neck tattoo when you're still in the army. <laughs> no, I don't like like neck and face tattoos. I can stand tattoos like virtually yeah. anywhere else. I just don't like neck and face usually if they're on the neck i feel like it's like mostly their whole neck so a lot of times that's a no for me yeah not my favorite but if it was just anyway whatever (laughs) i'm like (laughs) i'm like they look good on the blind spot girl she had to have a little bit that crawled up her neck (laughs) yeah she had tattoos all over her body (laughs) it's like prison break meets the fringe or the (laughs) Yeah. Also, they talked about Fringe in a book I just read from the library. That was funny. <laughs> Did they talk, like, the show? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, I was like, oh my god, they're talking about the Fringe, babe. And then, like, two minutes later, they're like, what are you talking about, man? His co-worker. Oh, you know, Fringe. <laughs> I was, uh, 
was I doing? Oh, on the news. I was like just scrolling through Google News and something comes up for fringe and it was just like what the what the glyphs actually mean and it was like what why do I have like fringe news like 10 years after the show ended click and I was like <laughs> yeah and it said I was like is this old stuff no it said it had been posted 11 hours before and I was like cool I'm reading whatever this is it was, okay <laughs> it was talking about some stuff and I was like oh this is cool like I didn't quite know like it was about how people broke the code of like translating the glyphs to like figure out that alphabet and everything that they did and okay. how people like how you talk about that yeah how i think one person cracked not the whole alphabet because they hadn't even shown the whole alphabet yet but they had cracked the code for like the letters that had been shown within the first 16 episodes of the show airing and it was credited to this person and all this kind wow. of cool stuff and i was like oh that was fun i didn't know some of this i, was like, I like it <laughs> yeah <clears throat> this show got canceled 13 or like 10 years ago and people are still talking about it i was like i love it like the great ciphers of our time <laughs> yeah okay right. Um, that was, but the knack and the knack, the Nick <laughs> doesn't have a lot of information. So other than naked violin luring you to water might look like a horse when he does so. <laughs> yeah. It also showed up um, on the Wikipedia page for the Nixie as like an alternate name for them, oh. Nicks or Nixies. Which can apparently be like mermaid like or dragon like, but all seem to have to do with water. So Yeah. I've heard of yeah. them before. Nixie, I know, sounds familiar to me too, but I was like, Ugh, I don't have time to do a deep dive. Other I did write down that the Welsh version is called the Water Horse. <laughs> so that had a similar yeah. Yeah. name. Yeah. Or that's what it translates to or whatever. I was like, ah, oh, so cool. I was like, we could do a deep dive <laughs> into just water horses that want to drown you from around the world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, this one. <clears throat> uh, very simple looking, but at least kind of the pronunciation and they sound so cute when they say it. The vitra <laughs> the, or the vate. Okay, these ones are human-like beings that live underground in rural, rural areas. They're rarely seen above ground, but live alongside us helping to look after cattle. Hmm. Uh, let's see if you recognize, because they've got some other names too that they go by. Oh, is that uh, the one you said was like the Tomty? Yeah, it did say yeah. that sometimes they are called, I think, Tomty or Vatar. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, but it, <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, it's like maybe some overlapping too. Yeah. Um, they, oh yeah, they said experts. Okay. A vit vitra. Oh God. <laughs> I'm just not even going to try. <laughs> <laughs> Vitra, according to Wiki, is a type of vater or supernatural spirit from northern Sweden. And experts are not certain if they can be grouped with the Halder and the Nacken, as they all, um, quote, support nature against humans and dangers. Oh, so I okay. guess that just means they're kind of like, <clears throat> like, nature spirits that aren't necessarily yeah. good yeah yeah exactly they might be a little bit more chaotic evil like they're not yeah. completely malevolent or benevolent like they're not one side or the other like they might help you but depends how you treat them <laughs> yeah which like fair <laughs> um the vitra so this was another quote the vitra <coughs> or vitra is part of scandinavian folklore from sweden norway denmark iceland the faroe islands and the swedish-speaking parts of finland 
I misspelled Finland. <laughs> final land. <laughs> the final land. The final land land. <laughs> 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 oh my god <clears throat> in tales told in the north of sweden vitror off or however i said it i'm sorry often take the place that trolls tomti and vatar hold in the same stories told in other parts of the country hmm. so i put maybe they're sort of interchangeable but referred to by different names in different places as a lot of things are. yeah da, 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 da. also um i think it was it must have been your segment about the tom t i didn't really remember because when my brother listened to it and then texted that he was something about porridge and like i did i was like did oh. you say buttered porridge yeah <laughs> and that you went he was like yeah and then i was like mm, and i went and made some and i was like what <laughs> i didn't remember i hadn't remembered talking about it and then i was like oh i didn't know you liked that all right then <laughs> but that was so I've funny i've never had it yeah i haven't had it with just butter but he kind of used to eat weird things when he was just um what is it weight training or whatever when you're gonna mm. like like not weightlifting competitions but you know people have to diet weird um yeah whatever for you know what i mean <laughs> be like ah. anyway i thought that was so funny i was like did we influence a listener to go and do something <laughs> <laughs> Next time we should tell everybody go eat chocolate chip cookies and then see what they Ugh. do. Yes, I need to be eating Do chocolate chip cookies right now. Doesn't that make you want chocolate chip cookies? <laughs> yes, hundred <laughs> percent. All right, we're gonna make some now. We will do that on our mini sode recording tomorrow. I have like an eighth of a cup of chocolate chips left. That's like it. I made chocolate chip pancakes and I put a whole bunch <laughs> in there. So I have like, and then I was like, I'm not going to finish the bag. That'd be ridiculous. And said, left myself no. the most pathetic, like handful of chocolate <laughs> chips in a giant chocolate chip bag. It was ridiculous. I know I can never keep the chocolate chips on hand. It's like, usually you have enough flour. You got enough sugar. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's like, oh, we need chocolate chips. <laughs> but they were some good pancakes. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> uh, ba, 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 ba. They, okay, so they also said that these guys have their own invisible cattle sometimes. Oh, <laughs> invisible cattle. That sounds fun. I know. I was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, no. They liked horses. <laughs> okay, oh. okay. They're a fan of the hoofed animals. Yeah. Although apparently their hooves have a difference. Which I laughed when they're like talking about, well, horses have this kind of hoof and cows and sheep uh, kind of have a divided hoof. And they're oh, like, yeah. The yeah, this podcast was like quoting. They're like from Alberta. Spca. I'm like, oh, it's from Alberta. We have so many cows here. I guess <laughs> we're just over here cataloging the hoof prints. <laughs> yeah, we really are the Texas of Canada. <laughs> yeah, um, we're Berta. <laughs> we're Berta. Berta. Berta beef. Berta. <laughs> Berta. Or Ferda. People might have heard Bird of Beef if they listened to let or watch Leonard Kenny. Yeah. Anyway. Um, it's best practice to say look out when throwing out hot dish water or urinating, which I guess outside? <laughs> because Yeah, we talked I had that in mind, urinating okay. in the barn. And it was like, <gasps> okay. that's rude. Yeah. All right. See, my memory's not so good, eh? I wasn't sure. I was like, dishwater or urine did we talk about that <laughs> yeah okay okay um and also to just try and avoid building your house on top of theirs too <laughs> yeah 
Um, yeah, this reminded me of talking about avoiding um, like trolls, I guess, and other elves, mm-hmm. maybe other supernatural creatures, because it came up briefly. I almost went on a mild tangent on it when I covered the Icelandic Yule lads in a Christmas one. That's what I remembered this from. So, oh, okay. yeah, they might even construct like a horrible accident to be- befall you. So it's known that people will sometimes have to go out of their way to avoid building near their abodes or their pathways. So houses huh. have even been rebuilt or moved to avoid a vitra way or a vitra place. All because of the bad luck that you can get building on top of these like special Weird. Places. Yeah. Heard of that. Um sounds pretty cool. And in many cases the term vitra carring, which apparently means vitra hag or old woman, and it's sometimes <laughs> used instead of the name Skogsra. But they're usually two different creatures. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> I thought Skog just meant woods, because Anyway, Skog Pat's DJ name was Skog because it's part of his last name. Yeah. But yeah, it's always interesting learning the different meanings of things. <laughs> okay. That is the end of my creatures. So I just have a little fairy tale story. Ooh. Um which is actually called the werewolf, so I guess it's not really the end of the creatures, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got some... It's, yeah, it's from... I think this was the one I got from the fairy tales.mythos or whatever. I used <laughs> the same website. Oh, my... Yeah. That's it. You had for one of them. Yeah, it was... <laughs> mythos dot... Or mythos us dot fandom or something it's the myths wiki i guess yeah (laughs) the folklore wiki (laughs) okay so this one's basically that once upon a time of course there lived a king his queen and their only daughter so of course they loved her dearly and one day before the girl was grown her mother unfortunately fell ill and died Hmm. also of course (laughs) no fairy tales do the parents ever yeah live? <laughs> you always need a step parent and step siblings and a best friend yeah. that's an animal okay Ooh, okay okay i was gonna say check check yeah <laughs> so obviously the kingdom mourned the queen heavily but her daughter grieved her hardest of all As she grew up, she grew taller and more beautiful every single day until she was a very gorgeous young woman. And of course, she had many ladies in waiting to attend her every need and to help her dress and do her hair and all of the court ladies. (laughs) Which always sounds so weird. I like don't understand. (laughs) Oh, especially in real life, how like if you were the king or something, there was like, and that scene in Outlander, there was like, 20 people when he's trying to take a shit the king and you're like you're all yes! kind of standing here <laughs> oh it was so weird no it's my worst so nightmare weird. to be surrounded by people 24 <laughs> 7 like you can't even like fucking put on your socks without somebody you're like help me put on your socks like, no! get out of here i will get <laughs> like possibly even pee shy if there's too many people in the bathroom or i have to pee too bad <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no thank you. I just like <laughs> I'm very much an introvert. I need to like decompress like alone if I'm constantly around people. Yeah. I like can never like fully relax really. And it's like no. exhausting. No. But you know they say there's like the bookstore vibe or the library thing or whatever. Tell you what. Now that I work till 5.30, once most people go home from work at 5, I mean, especially if I had a lot of vegetables for lunch, I'm like, 
it's so relaxing in here. Maybe I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's such a weird, it's so different. It's like a place. It's like going to a place after hours. It's like very quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like that people say you're in like a bookstore or a library or something. And all of a sudden everyone's going to go take a shit. <laughs> I don't have that. Oh, I've but... heard that though. And I was like, I, I know. Can, yep. Watch out for it. Maybe you'll have it now. <laughs> um, but anyway, yes, all the court ladies. But I don't know that they're hopefully not watching every move. <laughs> She's just a princess. Yeah. Um, but this one lady did have a particular interest in her. Um, well, had been with her for a long time. This was an older lady you know, more her dad's age because she was widowed and had two daughters almost hmm. the same age as the princess. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she saw an opportunity in the queen's passing, of course. You know, perhaps oh, she no. could get an in with the king <gasps> through the princess. <laughs> oh. Tell surprise. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so then she could weasel her way into being a queen and being rich. And also, if she was a real person, I would say single parenting is hard, to be fair. <laughs> we'll try not to judge. So she's constantly complimenting the princess and talking in her ear and prattling on about how happy a new wife might make the grieving king. Um, so the princess... Hang on. Windows wants me to restart now or remind me tomorrow. <laughs> oh, jeez. I guess I have an update. The princess spending more and more time with the court lady grew more fond of her. And as she did, she became more convinced that the lady spoke the truth and was oh so wise and worldly. After all, she's mm. been married already. <sighs> She, like, knows how the sex works. <laughs> yeah. She's like a hundred. <laughs> Equivalent. <laughs> the princess asked the lady, who do you think would make a good wife for my father? <laughs> and the lady explained it wasn't for her to say, but surely it should be someone who could provide him and the princess with both love and friendship and family. Someone who could cherish the cherish the princess and have her surrounded by constant companions that could help her with her every need kind of like her daughters uh. <laughs> so the princess told her father you should get to know that court lady you cannot mourn her mother forever can you tell I paraphrase this <laughs> <laughs> the original was so much longer oh yeah oh. that's true some fairy tales <laughs> I'll like open and it'll be like average read times four minutes and then it's like the oh. next one you open it's like read time 42 minutes and you're like nope not even gonna bother reading that the first time oh god yeah that would yeah I don't see like, that necessarily because I don't no I'm not looking for that but yeah once I start to scroll down it's like oh oh god I'm still scrolling <laughs> yeah, some websites it'll tell you like how long the read time is and you're like uh no thanks that's good <laughs> Yeah, like an audiobook. Oh my god. Yeah, I guess I should look. Yeah. <laughs> Estimated read time. Uh, or on Reddit, too long didn't read. <laughs> TLDR <Yeah. laughs> synopsis. <laughs> um. Okay, so she said... I don't know if I said this. So the princess told her father, you should get to know that court lady... You cannot mourn mother forever. Perhaps take a wife. But he refused and said her mother had been the love of his life. And she said the faithful court lady loves us so, etc. She loves our <laughs> bank account, father. <laughs> you have all the shiny things. <sighs> The princess persisted and kept wheedling and whining and begging. So finally her father, the king, relented and he said, Enough, I will consent to this arrangement to make you, my only daughter, happy. But I will do so on only one condition. 
You want this so badly that you must not change your mind and be fickle of heart once it's done. You must never raise a word of complaint against your new stepmother, even if you are unsatisfied with her as your mother and the queen. Oh. Careful what you wish for. Yeah, I'll do it, but you better shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. <laughs> And the stepdaughters, go figure, that came along with the package were not so attractive. You know. <laughs> but that's how it goes. Now that the lady was queen and stuff, she was all enraged that they were constantly compared to the princess and her beauty, and not favorably. She thought, of course they need some attention too, especially after the princess meets and falls in love with a prince from a neighboring country. So, yeah. you think it's going kind of Cinderella, but then she just quietly meets a prince on her own, so maybe nice. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> no drama there. He's just kind of cool. The drama nice. lies elsewhere. <laughs> hmm. uh, soon after that, an enemy, possibly from another country, IDK, I don't know, <laughs> threatened the kingdom. And so the king took his army and left to defend his land. But as soon as he was gone, the evil stepmother starts treating the princess, of course, like dog shit. She made sure her daughters were also just as hateful and mean to the poor princess. Hmm. <clears throat> she then sought out the prince while he was hunting one day, because uh, he had stayed behind to presumably guard the princess in the castle. Yeah. I guess. And she then cursed the prince and turned him into a werewolf. Oh. Jeez. Okay. As is, you know, every prince charming gets turned into. <laughs> yeah, the princess and the werewolf. <laughs> I know. That's when it starts to di diverge from that's the Twilight. You know, for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's Twilight. It, it's ancient YA romance. No. <laughs> I don't know. I've always I don't know. I just I'm not a dog person and I feel like I don't want to fall in love with like a werewolf like dog creature thing. <laughs> so all the people that were always like Twilight, I was like, yeah, it doesn't matter what they look like. It'll never be a werewolf. Sorry. Like <laughs> So you're more I team don't Edward. Care. <laughs> oh, I had to be uh <laughs> okay. Eating, even reading the Black Digger Brotherhood, there's now werewolves like Lycanthrope in it, and I'm just like, mm. <laughs> like they're cool characters and stuff, but I'm just like, oh yeah. I don't know the like side things they do are normally about like conservation, and they're trying to like save wolf populations. I was like, I can get behind that. I like this plot. Like it's kind of cool. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. And the. Like yeah, there, like there that's were, at like, least interesting. Native like Americans in Twilight. And yeah, it's yeah they're like trying to do more of that kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Like I'll I'll read a book if it's like a romance book, but like that's the main plot. They're like trying to conserve like wolf populations. So I was like, that's kind of cool. They're working at like a research facility. It's like I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this is neither here nor there. But the book I was just reading, which is part of more of a true crime FBI type series I was sad to see was labeled on the spine from the library as a romance because <laughs> I was like oh I mean where's the romance <laughs> the main character it's yes she has a man and it's kind of about what he's going through and what she's going through but literally there's like Maybe one yeah. scene where they're together. So I don't know how you can call, oh, like, shit. classify yeah. that as a romance. <laughs> it's more of yeah. a thriller. Um. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you gotta read yeah. the Black Digger Brotherhood. Come on. They just oh announced... God, was... They just announced just that they finally... I'm gonna read the random one that I have that my mom sent me. I no. don't need to know what came first. <laughs> There's... There's like 14 books before that one or some shit. It's I think that's why I can't do it, because I'll have to read everything. You know me. <laughs> but they're, 
they just announced they finally got it greenlit to make it sadly instead of into a tv show it's being made into a movie they're starting to like produce them and it's going to be released by some romance like romance streaming service i don't know how that's gonna work like what this stupid streaming thing is but apparently they release okay. like probably shitty romance movies and it's gonna be garbage but whatever Come i'll on, give it a, a shot channel that outlander is on yeah, <laughs> that, like women yeah. networks yeah um, yeah <laughs> so, but we'll, we'll see that's better than the hallmark mark channel but yeah i can see oh that it be. Basically, the description of it sounded like one step up from, like, fucking Hallmark. And you're like, oh, great. It's a movie, not a TV show? Like, okay. And it's how many books? Yeah. (laughs) Right now, they're pushing almost 40. Like. like, Okay. Black Dagger Brotherhood. Woo. Between all the offshoots, yeah. (laughs) She's got... With the the main one, there's the prison camp. There's the oh god, the like werewolf one. So there's three. There's like three main offshoots right now. I yeah. mean, but each each offshoot normally I do has like, like to have a lot of books four, to read. <laughs> like each offshoot normally has between five and six, and then it's like a closed, and then it like goes back to the Black okay. Taker Brotherhood for like four or five books and then she starts like another offshoot for like five or six books. Oh my god, now it sounds like you're describing the Outlander because she has books that she calls yeah. the bulges and other ones that aren't uh-huh. <laughs> necessarily <laughs> integral to the main plot. Like the ones yeah. about Lord John Grey. Oh uh, yeah. Do you know who he is now? You must. You've been, you're on season three-ish. John Grey, is that that dude that's looking after jamie's son is that John Gray? yeah yeah yeah. because he was the he was the nicer prison yeah warden type guy yeah he's nice yeah. i like his character I, like, I don't mind he's when he pops character. up yeah yeah he's good you'll you'll continue to like him i'm sure i like to i like even the books that are just the scottish prisoner is just about like basically him and jamie during after Jamie mm. gets out of Ardsmere, but is uh, at uh, Hellwater with yeah, yeah his his little illegitimate son there, as you said. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. Who knows? Gotta cut out the Outlander talk. Um. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Yes, the hunting party returned without the prince, so she doesn't know what happened to him. One day she asked if she could go out into the woods to walk where the prince had been lost and to kind of work through her grief. I just put find some peace or some pieces and then I wanted to kill myself, what? but I still put it there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Find some peace or out. some pieces. That's, that's one way to put it. Wow. I feel like... Uh... The co-host of the well, that's interesting when she'd be like, oh my god, I hate myself. After she make a joke, I'm like, yeah. Anyway, the stepmother said, okay, you can go out as long as my daughter goes out with you. We can't have you walk in the woods alone. One of them's gotta go with ya. <laughs> okay. So, her and one of the stepdaughters walk into the woods and they wandered for a while just listening to the bird songs and trying to find some inner quiet then after a time they came upon a little kind of thatched rudimentary hut in the woods Hmm. it was of course nestled deep in the dark thickly wooded part of the forest where all the bad things happen and her stepsister did not want any part of this and refused to go inside with her but the princess insisted that she was going in to try and get a drink of water She went in alone to find a little old lady sitting on a bench inside, quite ancient and gray. She said to the woman, Good evening, Motherkin. Can I, may I ask you for a glass of water? To which the woman replied, You are heartily welcome to it. Who may you be that step beneath my lowly roof and greet me in so winning a way? 
Well, she introduced herself and explained that she what she was doing in the forest and said, no doubt it is my fate to grieve um, and explained how her, her love was lost. Hmm. The old woman said she had done well by confiding in her. I have lived long and may be able to give you a bit of good advice. When you leave, you will see a lily growing from the ground. This lily is not like other lilies, but it has many strange virtues. Run quickly over to it and pick it. If you can do that, you need not worry, for then one will appear who will tell you what to do. Okay. Cryptic! (laughs) Yeah. Our favorite. (laughs) So off the princess went after bearing her stepsister's complaints and gripes about her tardiness. After a time, the princess spotted a single white lily, just pristine, almost glowing in the distance ahead. She ran to get it, but it seemed to vanish as soon as she got to it. But then it appeared further down the path. Again, she got close only to see it pop and disappear before her eyes only to reappear further down the path. Hmm. (laughs) Damn it! (laughs) Finally, it appeared atop a high hill, alone among a, a very rocky outcrop. This time, as the princess got there, she was able to pluck the flower from the ground. But when she looked back to see where the path was that she'd come from, she saw only the thick trees. So she sat down on the rock and wept, having a bit of a pity party. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) She was tired and hungry. Um. (laughs) Night crept in, the stars came with it. Suddenly, she was startled by a voice right next to her. Or so it sounded like. Good evening, lovely maiden. Why do you sit here so sad and lonely? She sat bolt upright, probably peed herself a little bit. (laughs) She saw a tiny old man. Probably remind her of the little old woman a little bit. Meeting all these old (laughs) senior citizens. Yeah. She explained her story and how lost and scared she was, and he said, never fear. First, you must build a fire. He gave her a flint and steel, and she proceeded to do so. She gathered some moss and sticks and did as he instructed. After that was done, he ordered her to walk a slight ways away where she would see a kettle of tar. She was to bring him the kettle. She complied. He said to put it over the fire, so she did. He waited until it was nice and hot and sticky, and he said, throw the lily in. She said, Into but it's tar? so pretty. <laughs> okay. He reminded her she had said she would not complain, but follow his instructions. So she threw it in. They then heard a great howling and rumbling from down the hillside. A horrible crashing sound came rushing up the hill towards them. It was an enormous wolf. Make haste, said the old dude. Run to the edge of the hill, and the The moment the wolf comes along, (laughs) upset the kettle on him. Hey, I also had a line in there about how it came running up that hill. Kate Bush. Running up that hill. (laughs) I thought, oh my god, restrain yourself. (laughs) I never really really liked the Kate Bush version. I like the Meg Ryan not Meg Ryan. Um Meg Ryan. Meg something. Wait, it's not it's not her song originally, you mean? It's Kate Bush's, but I don't like her like oh. her one. I like different covers people have done of it better. Like the first oh, one cool. I think I ever heard was from a, a movie called was it called like Daylight or something? Um, oh really it was about vampires and uh the cover was from that song was by placebo and it was really oh, good yeah, yeah, yeah i really liked that one that was the first one i ever heard i didn't hear the kate bush i didn't know it was a kate bush song until literally like when it blew up last year with like stranger things are they like everything. are they like as different as like <laughs> 
Marilyn Manson's Tainted Love and like the original one? <laughs> is it like uh I don't know what I mean. Like but yeah, not too much. The placebo one is like version. really yeah. slow. It's like really okay. slow. And the okay, music yeah. is a lot quieter. Yeah. Oh yeah, change the tempo. That can really change a song. Mm-hmm. I hate sometimes where they slow down songs for like commercials and then yeah, oh, let's have someone sing it in this. I don't know. I don't mind that kind of style, but like they just have someone sing it in like a really slow, like sometimes soft it's weird. voice. Yeah, I'm like, like shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, make haste, the old dude. Run to the edge of the hill, and the moment the wolf comes along, upset the kettle on him. She was so scared, but she agreed. She ran to the wolf's path and dunked the kettle over his head. To her surprise, the wolf started to change, shedding its thick pelt and standing, I assume, naked before her. (laughs) Maybe that's just how I'm picturing it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's how I'll picture it too. It's better than like, the your picture. Your clothes don't come with you. <laughs> yeah, better than the picture I had of just throwing hot tar on a dog, <laughs> like a psycho in the forest. Yeah, yeah. The old man can have clothes on, but the prince—that's fine. No, he can be naked. <laughs> yeah. It was her prince, so they embraced passionately, and they thanked mm-hmm. the old man for his help. The prince then explained how he had been enchanted by the evil queen. They talked all through that night. And as the sun rose, they saw a nice broad path from the top of the hill down to the castle. The man, the old man asked, lovely maiden, do you see anything out yonder? Yes, she said. I see a horseman on a foaming horse riding as fast as he can. The old man said that this was the king's messenger, his army riding behind. She begged to go down and meet her father, but the old man said, You must not yet. It's too early. Let's see how it turns out. Time passes and the sun is shining directly on the castle. He says, Lovely maiden, do you see anything below? Yes, replied she. I see a number of people coming out of the castle and some are going along the road and others into the forest. Old man says, those are your stepmother's servants she has sent some to meet the king and welcome him but she has sent others to look for you the princess again wants to go down he cautions wait and see how it turns out still the princess stared down the path she knew the king's messenger was bound to come up lovely maiden turn around do you see anything down below Yes, there is a great commotion in my father's castle, and they are hanging black banners. That is your stepmother and her people, and they will assure your father that you are dead. (laughs) The old man. What? Oh no, let me go and spare him his anguish. No, wait, let's see. It urges the old man. Again, some time passes. A retinue of king's men come down the path, but still the old man urges her to wait. What do you see? I see my stepmother in mourning clothes. The old man, they are pretending to weep for you. Wait a while. They wait. Then the old man says, lovely maiden, turn around. What do you see below? I see people bringing a black coffin. Now my father is having it opened. Look, the queen and her daughters are down on their knees, and my father is threatening them with a sword. Man, okay. you're... <laughs> it's not going well. <laughs> no, I'm so confused. <clears throat> the old man says, your father wished to see your body, so your evil stepmother had to confess the truth. So she says, please let me go down. And he says, no, please just stay a little while longer. We've yet to see how it all turns out. Because she's told by her father not to ever complain about her stepmother. So we're not sure if he would actually believe anything she said. Uh, I think maybe is why he's cautioning her. But That makes sense. Yeah, but he's just like, turn around! (laughs) you see anything down below uh i see my stepmother and sisters with my father and they are all moving this way 
the old man said. Now they have started out to look for you. Go down and bring up the wolf pelt from the gorge. She did so. He instructed her to stand at the edge of the hill. So she did. When they could see the stepmother and stepsisters start to crest the hill below, he shouted, throw down the wolf pelt. So she did, whereupon it fell right onto the evil ladies. As mm. soon as it hit them, they were instantly transformed into three hulking, ugly werewolves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Immediate retribution. <laughs> yeah. And how they howled in misery and rage and ran off into the woods. Then the king finally comes into sight and sees his daughter on the hill. The old man cries, lovely maiden, now hasten, run down and make your father happy. So she ran hand in hand with her prince and all wept with joy at the reunion. Does the prince have the clothes prince. now or are they just like merrily skipping down the hill while he's naked? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he has clothes because it already sounded dicey when I said, go down and make your father happy. <laughs> But the princess recounted her trials and turned around to point out the helpful old man up the hill. But he was gone, just vanished into thin air. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. They would then return to the castle for a banquet and celebration, and the king invited all the VIP guests and aristocrats. They had a grand wedding for the princess and her man, and it lasted for days and was so joyous. But anyone who does wander the woods near the castle might still see one big old gnarled wolf and two smaller, just as mean, wolves. And you could probably guess who they are. <laughs> and that is the story of the werewolf. <laughs> it's fun. I like it. <clears throat> it's a different... The werewolf, anything that I would have expected. Yeah. It's called the werewolf. <laughs> I was like, gives me like Cinderella vibes, then maybe like Beauty and the Beast vibes. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like, definitely feels like a fairy tale. But I was still, you know, not convinced there was a clear um, lesson <laughs> there. Yeah. Patience, I guess. <laughs> yeah i guess um, yeah mostly be patience i think they had something about it and i was like i don't know what you're saying with your little write up it's a fairy tale anyway next week i'm sure we're back to much more brutal crimes <laughs> yeah what did we what even is next week I already forgot. Oh, it is March 10th, if I'm now looking at my <laughs> list properly. Yeah. So, that'd be the last one before my birthday, so I picked Scottish Crimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't have the list in front of me anywhere. I was like, I can't remember <laughs> what we said. Hey, Kelsey's been in a blanket from the start of this. Since yeah. the start of this. Oh my god, I can't talk. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm glad you're still not, you know, curled up asleep, but I'm the one that's tripping over my tongue, so <laughs> maybe I should put myself to bed. <laughs> oh, I'm going right to bed. I'm tired. <laughs> <sighs> it's nine o'clock on a Saturday. No, just kidding. All right. It's Friday. Good. It is Friday. I know. <laughs> it's almost 11 the... p.m. on a Friday. This is true. It's way past my bedtime. I go to sleep at like nine. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's past our bedtime. Yeah, my All right, eyes yes. are watering. Things to do tomorrow. We got it. Okay, we'll see you guys next yeah. week. Bye. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Keep it cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> my friend was trying to work today and was like okay but I can hear my cat snoring cutely, cutely in the other room or whatever <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Damn, I'm those kitties. Another picture of him. Is he curled up by the laptop? Yeah, see, it's like so funny. And this is him right now. He's like oh. laying in between the wall and the laptop, and then like his tail's Honestly. across the front part. He can't get up. It's He's like, stuck. <laughs> then we're You're gonna stuck. Make any damn like hard surface look comfortable he'll like lay up against a wall and then all of a sudden he's got his feet up on it like he's you know gonna roll over and spoon yeah. the wall and you're like how is that comfortable <laughs> hi babe who am i recording with it doesn't sound like kelsey <laughs> it's kelsey you can't yeah. hear kelsey <laughs> <laughs> okay, weirdo. <laughs> anyway, um, sound like it was recording with Kelsey. All right. <laughs> yeah, Banif. Yeah, that's right. Come to Banif. Banif, papa. <laughs> yeah, it was like pronounced roughly. It was like roughly. It's roughly pronounced beef roast. Oh, it literally is from Norse mythology for smart people on norsemythology.org. <laughs> so it's like a fucking government website, .org, right? I think maybe. I can't remember. I was like, are you kidding I me? Think it might be one of those ones that's like, it sounds legit, but it might be a little less. Than on <laughs> Norse mythology for smart people. By frost, pronounced <laughs> roughly Biff Roast. <laughs> cool. Biff Roast. Biff Roast. The Biff Roast. <laughs> Honey, did you forget the Biff Roast? <laughs> did you forget the Biff Roast in the oven? Mmm, <laughs> Biff Roast. <laughs> Biff Roast. <laughs> And we almost had that tonight, but we're gonna have it Sunday because we did uh, take out a roast. <laughs> you almost had a beef roast. <laughs> we did almost. <laughs> it's nice. Pat makes it with the very traditional UK Yorkshire puddings, and Ooh, they are nice, delicious. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was like, because <laughs> you burst in here i was like why did you say you didn't sound like it didn't sound like kelsey could you hear kelsey or just whatever and he's like well sometimes i can yeah but he's like also because you were telling her stuff that she should already know and i was like well the listeners might not know oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah i have to laugh i don't remember how they described it it was about a fbi guy and a psychopath like it was not <laughs> It was a oh. flattering description of uh, Michael Sheen's character or whatever. Fringe. Oh, are you talking but... about Fringe or Wait. it's not Michael Sheen? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. Are you talking about uh... Prodigal Son? Damn it. Well, they have a very similar dynamic. There's a father-son that get reunited yeah. that were estranged. And the father is very, very smart. I'm sorry. Uh, not I think Sheen. it's Prodigal Son. <clears throat> that I was just talking about. Yes, you're right. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry. God damn it. <laughs> you know me. We're like this. That's <laughs> why so I'm like, as soon as you said Michael Sheen, and you're like, and the male, like, FBI, and I was like, what? I was like, Olivia Dunham. <laughs> no, you're, you're right. You're yeah. right, right, right. Okay, but they did mention it in a book I was talking about. They literally did mention uh, the fringe. Nice. And then... The other thing I was referencing was was referencing Prodigal Son, I think. <laughs> this has been Castles and Cryptids. You can listen to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor, Breaker, Pocket Cast, and our YouTube channel. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Reddit. On our website, you can listen to all of our episodes as well as view pictures for each of our segments. Check out our Patreon page to view all of our tiers and become a Patreon supporter today to unlock monthly bonus episodes and behind-the-scenes content.
We are working on an Ask Us Anything. You can submit questions by social media or by email at castlesencryptids at gmail.com. Do you have a spooky ghost story, a creepy cryptid sighting, or a thrilling true crime tale you would like to share and have us include in a future episode? Send us your listener story by social media or by email. Please include the name that you would like mentioned. Our music is by Kobe Fair. Our logo and artwork is by Antonio Garcia. Thanks for listening.